Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my live videos and on this video there is lots to negotiate about uh, I am uh, going to be giving you an update on some more transfer news keeping up to date of what players are linked with Manchester United so I am going to be going through with you the four players that you know Manchester United could sign which are currently strikers and also going to be giving you the latest on Paul Pogba and that is the let. So the first topic of the development I'm going to start with is uh, which striker do you think Manchester United could sign in the summer transfer window. Now there has been you know quite a few strikers on our agenda you know because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did reveal you know that he wants Manchester United to sign a striker in the summer transfer window. Now we'll go through it so one striker that has been on Manchester United's agenda recently and that has been Borussia Dortmund's Erling Haaland. Now revert back to the January transfer window, Manchester United you know, were in for Erling Haaland and he was our number one priority target and plus he was a cheap solution because he was available for around £16 or £17 million pounds was the player. Now his father Alf Inch Haaland he come out and give the couple of main explanations why Manchester United had missed out on Erling Haaland because obviously you know there has been a lot of uncertainty over Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's future plus it got revealed that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer didn't want him enough and man, of course Man United you know have endured a lot of bad you know spells throughout the course of this season obviously you know Man United are not in Champions League football now obviously you know back in the January transfer window Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Ed Woodward went to Norway to obviously you know, meet up with Erling Haaland to discuss a possible transfer to Manchester United. So it's a shame you know, that we didn't get him really because he would have been an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer type signing with the player. But recent reports have come out and said that you know we have reignited our interest in Erling Haaland. Uh, Man United are set to rival Real Madrid for his signature. Now, reportedly, you know, he's got a release clause of around £63 million in his Borussia Dortmund contract. Borussia Dortmund did sign him in January for around, was it, £17 million? And he has got a contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2024 as the player. But, you know, Solskjaer knows Erling Haaland really, really well because, obviously, you know, Solskjaer, you know, when he was at Mould, he gave Erling Haaland his debut at just the age of 16. And basically, you know, Solskjaer is keen on a reunion with the player. And he also did very, very well uh, in his short spell with Red Bull Salzburg, did Erling Haaland. So possibly, you know, Manchester United could get a deal finalised for Erling Haaland in the summer transfer window. But we are basically looking for an adequate replacement for Romelu Lukaku. So he's one of the four strikers that Manchester United could possibly sign in the summer. Now, another striker that's been on our agenda is Raul Jimenez from Wolves. Now, we've actually you know, been linked with Raul Jimenez for quite some time. As you all know, yesterday uh, the news broke out saying that Raul Jimenez does not have a release clause in his Wolves contract. I think he's available for around, is it 34 or £35 million, pounds, Raul Jimenez. Obviously, you know, Wolves did pay around €38 million, was it euros for him. To get him permanently because before Wolves paid around three million, was it euros or something like that, to get him on loan. But reflecting how good he did on his loan spell, you know, Wolves made the deal permanent, and he has got a contract with Wolves until two thousand and twenty-three. Obviously, before I was at Wolves, he was at Benfica. Before I was at Benfica, he was at Atletico Madrid, and he actually, you know, began his career in America. Did Raúl Jiménez, and I think he is in his late twenties, but probably you no know, one of Wolves' best players. He goes well alongside Diego Jota and, uh, and Adam Traore in Wolves' attacking line. But, you know, would you take Raul Jimenez at Manchester United? So, he's been another striker on our agenda. Another striker on our agenda has been Leon's Moussa Dembele. Now, me estimating on this, I think probably if we were to get Moussa Dembele in the summer, it'd probably, it'd probably cost us around maybe 60 or £70 million, pounds, something like that in that range. Obviously, you know, Moussa Dembele is into his, his, his second season now with Leon. He has got a contract with Leon until 2023, I think. Leon did pay around £20 million pounds in from Celtic. Back in the summer of 2018. 
you know, he did really, really well during his time with Celtic. Uh, the, also, the beneficial, thing, the beneficial thing is as well that Moussa Dembele has played in the Premier League because he did play for Fulham. That's why he actually you know, began his senior career with Fulham. And he's only like, what, 23 or 24 years of age. And he is an out-and-out -out number nine, he's Moussa Dembele. But quite a few other clubs have expressed their interest in him. Uh, and another strike that's been on our agenda has been Termo Werner from RP Lesbig. Now, I've been talking with you guys a lot about Termo Werner. Well, I mentioned him the other week. Uh, the RP Lesbig sporting director came out and said there's uncertainty over his future. Obviously, you know, I think Liverpool have been emerged as the favourites to sign him because Liverpool have been relentlessly linked to him. But Liverpool would have to sell one of their attacking trio in Sancho, Firmino or Mane to obviously you know, make sure Termo Werner gets game time week in, week out. Um, he would be available for around £50 million, pounds, would Werner, uh, because his release clause is due to expire at the end of this month, I think it is. And he's now into his fourth season with RP Lesbig. Of course, he's a former Stuttgart player, where he became the youngest player to represent Stuttgart. And Termo Werner can play in more than one position, so his versatility is very, very good. So there has been a lot of strikers on Manchester United's agenda. <laughs> Now, obviously, you know, the other striker that's been on our agenda is Tottenham's Harry Kane. But I'm very, very sceptical that Manchester United will sign Harry Kane in the summer transfer window. Now, I was reading the Daily Express today and it also put Jadon Sancho into the equation. And it said that Man United are in strong position to sign Sancho and Kane because of Brexit. Britain, you know, will leave... Uh, Britain will leave the European Union in January 2021 and this is the main explanation why he said, you know, we're in a strong position to sign both players. But I just can't see Manchester United signing Harry Kane. I do believe he will leave Tottenham will Harry Kane, but I just can't see him coming to Manchester United because I just don't think he will continue playing his trade in the Premier League. Plus, I don't think Man United are going to be willing to meet Tottenham's valuation because it said Kane's going to cost at least £150 million. Pounds. Recent reports even did say that Harry Kane could cost £200 million. Pounds. So that would make him the mo one of the most expensive players in the world and a record signing in the Premier League. But there hasn't only been Man United tracking Harry Kane, there's been City in for him, Real Madrid, Juventus. I think, you know, there's a good chance that Kane could go to Real Madrid and there's a good chance that he could go to Juventus. But I just don't see him coming to Manchester United. Now, obviously, you know, you've had Harry Redknapp, that's given his overarching view on the speculation, and Harry Redknapp believes he would be a great addition to our squad, but he does believe that, you know, Harry Kane should remain loyal with Tottenham. Now, obviously, you know, Kane made an admission recently, and he said, you know, he could decide to leave Tottenham if he feels as though the team are not progressing, and he's obviously, you know, not going to stay at Tottenham for the sake of it. Now, Harry Kane has revealed his ambition and his ambition is is to win some silverware because he hasn't won out in terms of silverware during his time with Tottenham. And Kane has been at Tottenham for several years. You know, he's been at Tottenham. Uh, he's been in Tottenham senior squad since two thousand and eleven, and since then, you know, Kane has scored one hundred and eighty one goals in two hundred and sixty one appearances, and he's scored just under. I think he scored just under 140 Premier League goals in just under 200 Premier League appearances. So actually, no, Harry Kane is Tottenham's third highest goal scorer in their history. But quite clearly, you know, Kane is, is unhappy with Tottenham. But we've been tracking Kane. Uh, we've been tracking him for at least the last five years or so. And obviously, you know, like I mentioned before, reiterate what I said. Daniel Lever, who's a Tottenham chairman, is a really hard negotiator. When you know it comes to you know try to recruit any players from Tottenham, but he is a very very good businessman. He did say that Ed Woodward was set to hold talks with Daniel Lever over possibly you know Kane joining Manchester United in the summer. Because don't forget you know we've done business with Tottenham in the past. But uh, Kane you know back in the summer of 2018 he signed a six six year contract with Tottenham worth in the region of two hundred thousand pounds a week. As it stands now, he's got four years remaining on his contract as Harry Kane. And obviously, you know, he's been out of a hamstring injury since New Year's Day. The good news is from a Tottenham perspective that when the season does eventually resume, Kane will be back in action. Uh, but yeah, but he has been out of a hamstring injury as Harry Kane. 
And obviously, you know, Tottenham can't win anything in terms of silverware this season because they're not in the FA Cup and they're not in the Champions League. Tottenham's ambition this season, when it does eventually resume, will be to finish fifth. So that can give them qualification for the Champions League. But I'm very, very sceptical that that's going to happen. Uh, Kane may not leave Tottenham, Tottenham this summer. He may, he may, you know, he may see how it plans out for next year. And if it doesn't, obviously, you know, work out and that, and Tottenham don't match his ambition, that's when I think, you know, he will definitely leave. Kane's also had quite a few loan spells. You know, he had loan spell with Leighton Norian, Millwall, Norwich and Leicester. And he also said uh, recently, early on this week, that the season may not be completed if it doesn't resume by the end of June. Harry Kane is 26 years of age. He is still in his prime and he has still got a lot of years ahead of him. Definitely, you know, Tottenham's best player. And Tottenham, you know, have lost a few of their imperative players. They lost Ericsson back in January to Winter Milan after he endured seven years with Tottenham. So he was a long-serving player. Also, too, they lost Danny Rose. You know, Madrid have done business with Tottenham a couple of times. You know, they got Bale off them back in 2013. He also got Luka Modric. And Tottenham have had quite a few injuries this season. So, obviously, you know, they've had to make rotation. But I think Tottenham did make a mistake by recommending Jose Mourinho in. I think they should have stuck with Mauricio Pochettino. Because analysing the vast majority of Mauricio Pochettino's tenure, Tottenham were competing in and out of the top four. Uh, in the last couple of years of his tenure, Tottenham did become title contenders. But, you know, like I said, my verdict on Mourinho is, is that he's got a good pedigree behind him, reflects on the amount of silverware he's won and that, but he's no longer good. He's no longer a manager now to the top level, is Jose Mourinho. And it didn't work out for him, you know, when we had him. And he already given you the main explanations why it didn't work out when we had Jose Mourinho. So, Kane will leave Tottenham, but I think it's... Very, very unlikely that Manchester United will sign him. So that's the latest news on Harry Kane. But, you know, Man United have got a lot of good attacking players anyway. Obviously, you know, we've got Odin Agarlo. That's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. Odin Agarlo has four goals in three starts for the football club. Now, Manchester United have got him on loan. We got him on a six-month loan. Obviously, you know, we like paying a third of these wages. It's probably very, very likely that we'll extend his loan till June the 30th due to the coronavirus pandemic because Odina Garlone's loan spell at Manchester United ends on the 31st of May. But, you know, Solskjaer did make an admission saying it's likely that Manchester United will decide to get Odina Garlone on a permanent transfer and it will cost us around £15 million to get Odina Garlone on a permanent transfer. But, got to be honest with you, he's an option of a different type of centre-forward because he's totally comparison to our other attacking players, and he's the vocal point. But he's definitely no confounded his critics, Ron. And I've got to say, he's a good cover-up to Marcus Rashford, is Odi Nagalo. Obviously, you know, Rashford's out with a back injury. He's been out with this back injury since, you know, our win against Wolves in the FA Cup. And obviously, you know, Solskjaer made the wrong decision by playing Rashford in that game, because obviously his injury probably wouldn't have occurred if you had to risk Rashford in that game. But when the season again does resume, Rashford should be back. But, you know, I said Rashford was one of our best players early on in the season. But I actually think, you know, Solskjaer prefers Rashford out wide than him playing in the number nine. Uh, obviously, you know, Anthony Martial, he's a very, very good attacking player. Recently rejuvenated himself, Anthony Martial. Uh, do you think there's doubts on his future, Anthony Martial's? Obviously, you know, Martial has been playing in that number nine role this season, even though he predominantly plays out wide on the left. In his four previous seasons, he's been on the left-hand side. It's just this season, he's been in that number nine role. I think Martial's on, what, 15 or 16 goals so far this season for Man United, and he's sustained quite a few injuries this season, Anthony Martial. Uh, so you can say that's had a bad effect on him. But we got Martial as a 19-year-old. That's when we got Anthony Martial. And I think one of the best seasons he enjoyed was his first season under the Louis van Gaal era. But I've got to say, aspects of Martial's game have really improved. Got to give Mason Greenwood a lot of credit because he's also done very, very well for us. This is his first full season in the senior squad. And I think he's got like 12 or 13 goals in all competitions this season. Greenwood... He can play as a number nine. You can also play him on the right. But I've got to say, I think he is a good backup. But in the next couple of years' time, I've got to say Mason Greenwood will probably emulate to Rashford's level or probably will end up overtaking Marcus Rashford. 
You know, Daniel James is another good attacking player for us. Obviously, you know, Daniel James can play on the left. He can also play on the right. We've played him on the left and the right this season. We've actually you know, overplayed Daniel James this season because when we signed him from Swansea last summer, I expect him to get game time under his belt, but I didn't expect him to play as many games to the extent as he has done. So I'm actually you no know, surprised in that aspect. But Daniel James was has been a good signing for us, but there's still aspects of his game that need to improve. Maybe his crossing needs to improve and his tracking back needs to improve. What? what? No. And he needs to improve. Um, he's, uh, he needs to uh, track back. You know that's what he needs to improve on. But prior to that, you know, don't really need to improve much. But he's played over thirty odd games this season for Man United as Daniel James. So yeah, so we still definitely you know, need a centre forward in the summer transfer window. Uh, I just want to give you a bit of news, by the way, on Jaden Sancho because I think it's very very imminent that Manchester United are going to sign Jaden Sancho in the summer transfer window. It's definitely you know, a lot more likely that Man United are going to sign Jadon Sancho over Harry Kane. Obviously, you know, Paul Merson has come out and he actually you know, is very, very sceptical that Manchester United or Chelsea will pay £120 million for Jadon Sancho. Borussia Dortmund have come out and quoted how much they want for Sancho. They want at least £100 million for the player or £120 million. But either figure is going to make him a record signing in the Premier League and it'd make him our most expensive signing. Now, the Irish Independent, they came out earlier on this week, I think it was, and they said it's unofficially confirmed that Jadon Sancho will, you know, complete a transfer to Manchester United in the summer. Uh, as you all know, Man United are willing to offer him the iconic number seven and I think he'd operate very, very well in the number seven. Because we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations. So yeah, we're willing to offer him the number seven shirt. And it also said we're willing to offer Jaden Sancho around £400,000 a week. So that would make him the highest paid player with the club. This is what it had basically said. But even, you know, with this coronavirus outbreak, you know, Borussia Dortmund do remain ruthless over their valuation. They do remain ruthless over their valuation. And, you know, they're not willing to let him go on the cheap. This is what it's basically says. So we've got to pay what Dortmund are demanding to convince Borussia Dortmund to offload the player. And obviously, you know, Rashford's come out and revealed that he wants to play alongside Jadon Sancho at Manchester United next season. <clears throat> so he wants Jadon Sancho at Manchester United next season. And that Jadon Sancho, of course, is now into his third season as a Borussia Dortmund player. I think he's got around two years left on his contract with Dortmund. He's under contract with them until 2022. So he's got two years remaining on his contract. But I've got to say, since his arrival in Germany, he has been a revelation as Jadon Sancho. He's, he's been a revelation. And, you know, Borussia Dortmund are going to make a huge profit on the play because they only paid around £7 or £8 million pounds in from Man City. He enjoyed two years at Man City, but the main explanation why he left City is because he didn't get enough first-team opportunities at Manchester City. So that's another beneficial thing. Jadon Sancho has played in the Premier League. But he is only the age of 20. He's just recently turned 20 years of age as Jadon Sancho. But Liverpool have been in for him Madrid and so too of PSG. We was relentlessly linked to him last year. But the main explanation why we didn't get him is because, you know, we we didn't offer any Champions League football. So we didn't end up, you know, getting Jadon Sancho. If we actually you know was to you know get Sancho and Harry Kane, that'd cost us probably around three hundred odd million pounds, say, or just under three hundred million. Say we got Kane for hundred and fifty and Sancho for hundred and twenty, that'd be two hundred and seventy million on two players. Or if Kane was to cost us two hundred, and you know Sancho hundred and twenty, that'd be three hundred and twenty million pounds on two players. But revert back to what I said about Kane, I'm very sceptical that Man United will sign him in the summer. Because there's cheaper solutions, like I've mentioned, Raul Jimenez is a cheaper solution, Werner's a cheaper solution, even Aubameyang's a cheaper solution. So I just can't see, as you know, spending that much money on one player. So that's the news on that. But Sancho's predominantly a right winner, and Manchester United are in search for a right winner. So that's the latest news on that. So now we will delve into the news on, you know, Pogba and Matthias Delay. So the swap deal is on between... 
Paul Pogba and Matthias Delet. So we're reportedly, we're reportedly willing to offer Paul Pogba, willing to offer Paul Pogba back to Juventus in order for us to sign Matthias Delet. So it actually you know, could happen, you know, Delet could come to Manchester United and Pogba you know, could make a return back to Turin. Now, as you all know, it came out yesterday, Matthias Delit's father-in-law give his overarching view on this speculation. He's actually you now dismissed speculation of him joining Manchester United as his father-in-law. Now, Matthias Delit has enjoyed a very, very difficult time with Juventus. This is only his first season with Juventus, by the way. I think he's played around 20 times in the Serie A this season. He has got a five-year contract with Juventus. Juventus did pay around €75 million Euros for Matthias De Ligt, which equates to which equates to just over £67 million in pounds sterling. Uh, obviously, you know, we was relentlessly linked with Matthias De Ligt last summer. Obviously, he turned down moves to Man United, Barcelona and PSG last summer. Also, to Liverpool had inquired about, inquired about his availability, but he did end up signing for Juventus. But like I said, he's enjoyed a very, very difficult time this season with Juventus. We obviously you know had a few centre-halves on our agenda last summer because Manchester United desperately needed to sign one. And we did sign one. It was Harry Maguire. We paid £80 million for him. He's the second most expensive signing at the club, just behind Paul Pogba. And he's the most expensive centre-half in the world. And I think he's done well since his arrival from Leicester, Harry Maguire. And we did make the right decision by giving Harry Maguire the captaincy on a permanent basis. You know, we're giving the captaincy reflecting on Ashley Young's departure. But yeah, we did get Harry Maguire. But, you know, I think Solskjaer's still keen on recommending the centre-half in. And I think Matty Stillett alongside Harry Maguire in our back line would be very, very good indeed. And uh, Matty Stillett's only young. He's only at the age of 20. Got to say, though, there was a lot of positives, you know, to take when he was at Ajax because... You know, Juventus is only the second club, second club, in his playing career, because obviously, you know, he began his career with Ajax. Did Matthias De Ligt. Obviously, you know, he joined their youth academy at the age of nine. Was in their youth academy for several years, and you know, broke into their senior squad in 2016, and then became an integral part of Ajax's team, especially when Davinson Sanchez left for Tottenham back in 2017. You know, Matthias De Ligt was key to Ajax's, you know, domestic uh, double last season. And also, he was key to Ajax progressing to the Champions League semi-final. Also, he won the Golden Boy Award back in December 2018. He was the first defender to do that. And plus, he played in the European final against us back in 2017. And he was the youngest player ever to, you know, play in the European final. He, he was just the age then of 17 years and 285 days old. So, yeah, so would you know take Matthias De Ligt to Manchester United as part of a swap deal of Pop Burt making a return back to Turin? But we have got a lot of centre-halves in the team. We've got Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof that are our first-choice centre-halves. I think Lindelof, you know, a lot of aspects of his game have really improved. I, I do believe probably Lindelof's too good as a backup. Lindelof did struggle in his first season at the club, but I think in his... Last season and this season, he has progressed as Victor Lindelof, I've got to be honest with you. Man United paid £30 million pounds for him from Benfica back in 2017. Obviously, you now we've got Eric Bay and Tuan Zebe that are our backup centre-halves. And obviously, you know, we've got, you know, Jones, but probably, you know, Jones will be one of the players that's leaving in the summer because Jones can't get in the team. We've obviously got Smalling out on loan at Roma. But, you know, probably unlikely that Man United is going to come back to Man United. So we're going to negotiate on getting rid of Smalling on a permanent transfer. So I'd love the late to come to Manchester United. Maybe there will be a fee involved as well in the swap deal. But with Paul Pogba, you know, there is a lot of uncertainty over his future. You know, it still isn't assured that he will leave Manchester United in the summer transfer window. Obviously, you know, Paul Pogba still revealed that he wants to leave Manchester United. He's actually you now got the same perception as what I had last summer because Pogba revealed last summer that he wanted to leave Manchester United because he was seeking for a new challenge and he publicly admitted that he wanted to leave the football club. But last summer, you know, we quoted out that we wanted 180 million for Paul Pogba 
and that's just over double than what we paid for him from Juventus back in 2016 because we paid £89 million for Paul Pogba. He's our most expensive signing. Not only that, he's one of the highest paid players at the club because he's on around £300,000 a week. But if Paul Pogba does leave Manchester United in the summer, um, he'll either go to Real Madrid. There was reports emerging out recently saying that um, his priority is to join Real Madrid in the summer. If he doesn't go to Real Madrid... He will make a return back to Juventus. Obviously, PSG and Barcelona have also been in for him in the past. Now, with Real Madrid, they're still looking to do more transfer business. Even though they did recruit around five or six players in last summer, Real Madrid did get like Luka Jovic in. They got Ferland Mendy, Rodrigo, Eden Militeo and Eden Hazard in, in that last summer. And they've lost quite a few of their imperative players, Real Madrid, but they are still keen on getting Paul Popper in. Uh, disregarding any swap deal, you know, we want at least £100 million for Paul Pogba this summer. But obviously, you know, due to the coronavirus outbreak, like I mentioned before, a lot of teams are going to lose millions in transfer revenues. Uh, players, you know, could go for much lower fees than they'd actually you know worth. They could go for next to nothing, such as Paul Pogba, because there was reports saying that Pogba, you know, is only worth £31 million. Analyzing, you know, the length of his contracts, plus with his appearances being limited this season, Pogba's only played eight times this season for Manchester United due to his injuries. But he's sustained quite a lot of injuries as a Manchester United player since he rejoined from Juventus back in 2016. Ed Woodward, of course, has had a few negotiations with Pogba's agent, Mini Raliola, you know, to try and resolve his future. And to obviously you not know, stop Mini Raliola making public attacks against the club because he's made a number of public attacks against the club since the turn of the year and Manchester United have been very, very critical of him. Let's be honest, we've been very, very critical of his agent Mini Raliola. But Mini Raliola did say he wants to take a great footballer to Real Madrid and he believes Pob is having a complicated time at Manchester United. But as it stands, Pob has got like two years left on his contract with Man United. You know, it's one year with an option of a further year. More than likely, Man United will trigger that one year extension on his contract. Pogba is the age of 27, so he has still got a lot of years ahead of him. And I think he'd do well alongside Bruno Fernandes in army field. There hasn't only been talks of Delit, you know, coming as part of Pogba going back to Juventus. There's obviously you no know, been talks of Aaron Ramsey coming to Man United as part of a swap deal of Pogba going back to Juventus. So, and I said, didn't I, you know, swap deals are very, very rare in the modern game, but they do happen. There's been a few other players on our agenda who could replace Bob Bino. You know, there's been talks of Sal Naguiez. There's been talks of James Madison. So, there is so many players on our agenda, and it's good that Solskjaer is making plans for the summer transfer window. If Solskjaer is still Manchester United manager in the summer transfer window, it will be his fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. Because so far he's enjoyed three transfer winners at the club and he's spent around £220 million on five players. And that's one thing, of, thing of, that I do credit him for. He's also got rid of a lot of the deadwood as Solskjaer since he got recommended in. Because a total of around nine players have left since he came in. Obviously we've got rid of some players on permanent transfers. Obviously you know, we loaned quite a few players out. And I think Solskjaer's planning to get rid of around six, six, maybe seven players in the summer transfer window. But, you know, Solskjaer wants to continue with the policy of recruiting young players to Manchester United like he did do last summer and all um, of that. And I think Solskjaer, to be fair, has promoted the youth well because a lot of the young players have been given their opportunities this season. But in general, you know, a lot of... All our players, you know, have been given the chances to express themselves. You know, that's uh, very, very good as well. That's very, very good as well. But, you know, Solskjaer's got the backing of Ed Woodward and he's got the backing of the Glazers. And also a lot of our fans and a lot of our players are still determined to back him because it is a transition period and I think Solskjaer does deserve at least a, another couple of transfer windows at Manchester United. But he's been here now 15 months as Solskjaer, so he has been here over a year. And like I said, it does take some managers' time to settle in. But yeah, we need to give him at least another season at the football club to see who else he can recommend in. 
So let's just see. Let's just see what happens. And Solskjaer is still under pressure to keep this good run of form up, you know, when the season does eventually resume. We are unbeaten in our last 11 games in all competitions. And that's our best vein of form since he was the interim manager. Um, also, too, he's um, progressed to the last day of the Europa League. He's progressed to the quarter-final of the FA Cup. So that's something else you've got to give him a lot of credit for. His approach to the big games has been very, very good. Because we've registered like 17 points against the big six sides this season. So that's also another positive you can take. And, you know... They're the positive you know you can take so far from his tenure at the football club. I'm still very sceptical though that he is the long-term solution for Manchester United. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless you all again very, very soon.